This is your WCIA3 forecast first, sponsored by Matex Heating, Cooling, and Plumbing. It has been a beautiful day across central Illinois as we got the rain and wind mainly out of here. Lots of sunshine, much drier look on satellite and radar this evening. That's going to set us up for a great weekend. In the meantime, temperatures right now are in the 50s out there. We'll be even warmer on Saturday, even Sunday. Moving ahead here. You're heading out this evening for any of the football games out there or to just go for a walk. Temperatures will drop fairly quickly once the sun goes down. We'll be down into the 20s overnight tonight. Coming up, we're going to talk more about the weather ahead here. We anticipate that we'll be seeing the last day of winter with spring weather on the way. Spring starts tomorrow. Great weekend in store, but rain returns. We'll also hear from Chief Meteorologist Kevin Lighty on the road. WCIA 3 News at 5 starts right now. Now on WCIA 3 News. The Illini make it look easy here in Indy with a convincing first round win. More from the team coming up. Also tonight, a toddler is dead after being bitten by a dog. What authorities know about what happened. Anna County has hundreds of foster kids, more than half of them boys. And they need your help to make sure they have positive role models. You're watching your local news leader. This is WCIA 3 News at 5. It's nice to get back um, to where I think we belong, and that's in the NCAA tournament. And the Illini get to continue their run in March. Good evening. I'm Jessica Coons in for Paul and Jennifer, and I'm joined by WCI3's Marley Weirda after Illinois' first NCAA tournament win in eight years. Hey, one down, five to go as Illinois continues its hunt for a national championship. They beat the 16 seed Drexel Dragons in the opening round, a 29 point victory for the Illini. We'll go out now to Brett Behrens, who is live outside of Farmers Coliseum. Liam and Brett, the Illini are moving on. And that's the biggest thing from today, Marley, is that they do get the job done. It's March, and truly anything can happen, but the Illini do come out after a slow start. They only scored two points through the first four minutes. They turned on the gas from there and had no breaks the rest of the game as they overpowered Drexel, and especially Kofi Coburn. He imposed his will all day long as the Dragons had no answer for the seven-foot Illinois center, putting up a game-high 18 points. Io DeSumo as well. He had a double-double with 17 points and 11 rebounds. Overall, four Illinois players in double figures with two more with eight as the Illini are moving on. It was a really good ex experience, um, especially for me. Um, I've never been here before, so, you know, just being out there with the guys, you know, we worked hard to come to this moment, and, you know, we, get, we went out there, obviously we got the, the win, but, you know, it, it was just about enjoying the moment, you know, enjoy being there, enjoy, you know, playing together and, you know, achieving the common goal. Illinois now advances to play either Loyola or Georgia Tech on Sunday. That's a second round game. If they can win that, they will be in the Sweet 16 for the first time since 2005. And we're all hoping for that Loyola matchup. We'll see if it plays out that way. No time or a location set on that yet. The one thing we do know, it will not be here at the Farmers Coliseum. We'll see where they play. That's going to be a hot ticket. That much I know, Marley, on Sunday. All right, Brett, thanks. We'll check back in with you in a little bit. Coming up later at 5.30. Now, Jess, the Illini should be happy. They are moving on. We already have an upset in the bracket. 15 seed Oral Roberts took down Ohio State earlier today. Good time to be an Illini fan. Absolutely. <laughs> All right, Marley, thanks. His 29-point win ties the program's second largest margin in an NCAA tournament game. The Illini have now won eight straight in 15 out of their last 16. The Illini are number one seed for the fourth time in program history and first since 2005 when they also made it to the Final Four. There's no doubt that fighting Illini fans are some of the most loyal when it comes to college basketball. They were out bright and early all over this morning, including at Marianne's and Champagne in full gear, as you see there. And of course, fans lined the sidewalks on Green Street to get a spot before tip off. As a senior, I really like that I've gotten to see them start from kind of the depths and play awful, winning only 12 games in my sophomore year. To, it's nice just to kind of have a season where we're just playing really well. Well, national championship, for sure. Students say some teachers even canceled classes today so they could cheer on the team.
We have new details from Decatur tonight. The police chief is clearing up concerns some people have about an upcoming event. The Community Day of Peace is planned for April 2nd. There will be music, food, and people available to help find jobs, but there will also be a gun buyback. It's a volunteer program, and police say the purpose is to get illegal guns away from criminals and children. They say they are no longer accepting magazines. Here's an update. Springfield police have made an arrest in a deadly shooting. This happened Monday near East Griffiths and 9th. 28-year-old Clinton Shores is accused of killing Daniel Kinney. He's charged with murder, home invasion, attempted armed robbery, and being an armed habitual criminal. If convicted, he faces life in prison. A toddler in Springfield died after being bitten by her family's dog. This happened last night near Indiana and Dayton Avenues. An autopsy was scheduled today for the one-year-old girl, and an online fundraiser is set up for the family. A proposal at the state capitol would let sex offenders live closer to schools. They currently have to live at least 500 feet from a school or park. This bill would change that to 250 feet. Advocates argue the restrictions don't actually keep people from reoffending, but also keep people homeless, especially in urban areas. Police we spoke with say this tries to fix a problem that doesn't exist. In Illinois, we should care more about people having a roof over their head than this continuing punishment, which doesn't actually achieve its goals in the first place. It's concerning again to law enforcement that we're, we're uh, trying to bend over backwards to, to help out a, a registered sex offender, and they, they need to be held accountable for those crimes. This bill would also make it easier for offenders to remain living in a place even if a school or daycare opens up after they move in. Illinois law currently requires the offender to move if that happens. Bacon County Casa needs your help. They're looking for men to be role models and mentor children in the foster care system. WCI3's Jamie Mays joins us live from the newsroom. So Jamie, how can people get involved? Jessica, they're having a quarterback virtual spring draft party later this month. They're hoping people who are interested will attend. CASA provides support for abused and neglected children so they can find safe homes. In Macon County, there are 630 children in foster care. About half of them are boys, but they only have less than 30 male volunteers. They're hoping to find men who are interested in becoming a positive influence. They need someone with life experience and that can share with them the good side of life and um, how to ha how to prepare for a future and that there is a cons positive, consistent adult there for them that can help them thrive in life. Women who are interested in volunteering can join the meeting too. There will be advocates available to answer questions from people who attend. Live in the newsroom, Jamie Mays, WCIA3, your local news leader. All right, Jamie, thank you. The Casa Quarterback Virtual Spring Draft Party will be on Tuesday, March 30th from 6 to 7 p.m. People in Decatur are one step closer to reopening an old building. The Lincoln Square Theater is more than 100 years old. Volunteers are repairing it. They say the roof and plumbing have been fixed. They're working on heating and redesigning the inside. They've been removing the chairs and found someone from Hollywood to buy a bulk of them to be used in a movie. It's also exciting because um, we're gonna we're generating some revenue from the sale that's gonna allow us to hopefully start the, the floor um, and get that in earnest because we really are only a couple of steps away from we think being able to open. They need volunteers tomorrow from 9 a.m. to noon to remove those chairs. They plan to open the theater this summer. The CDC has issued new safety guidance for schools, the changes you could see in your child's classroom. And the state is expanding vaccine eligibility. Who's next in line for the shot?